Hello, everybody. Uh, let's continue from where we left off yesterday. I started recording and you hear my voice, right? Okay, any questions from yesterday's lecture? Mm -hmm. Are there any questions from yesterday? No. Okay, maybe. Maybe I can start uh, uh, from a little back. We, we said that uh, uh, we are optimizing our file system and we looked at this file system consistency and we uh, looked at how these two programs, Windows, Windows uh, file system check and Unix file system check works. OK, these are the two things that we have looked at. Um, let me check my synchronization myself. One, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's not that bad. It's not good, but at least my voice is not interrupted, I guess. So uh, yesterday uh, we looked mm -hmm. at these two programs. Uh, how they work, and then after that we said that we said that uh, it is often the case where we have a cache between the disk and the memory, which is called the block cache. It is called block cache because we keep blocks in there. OK, we keep blocks in there. Uh, and uh, to, as the uh, uh, cache replacement algorithm, we use a modified version of LRU. Let, yesterday we said that LRU, although seems expensive for the page replacement algorithms, okay, for the TLB buffers, in this case, uh, or the pages, in this case, it is not any more expensive than accessing your speed, the disk. So we are going to use it, but LRU is not suitable all the time because we said that for some cases, if you read it block from the disk, it is that you will never read it because the idea, remember the idea of inodes, you remember the inode, it's an index node, and you keep your inode in the memory, okay? You don't, you never give it up as long as the file is open. So in that case, uh, uh, why do I need another copy of the inode in my, uh, in my cache? So maybe I should not, or even though I'm using inode a lot, maybe I should not keep it in my cache because it is already in my memory, okay? And sometimes, sometimes we say that, sometimes we say that um, some blocks are so important to be kept in my uh, cache uh, because if the system crashes, if the block is not is modified, as is not written to the disk, then my my file system will be uh, in an unstable situation. Okay. So these are the two things, and then uh, we said that this is our main file system uh, cache structure. It's a hash table. Okay. So what do we hash here? We hash the block numbers on a disk. I think somebody's microphone is on. Right? Could everybody turn off their 
microphones, okay, thank you. Uh, then uh, 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 we will have a hash table. That hash table will tell us if the block is in or uh, not in the uh, cache. But then we have a separate data structure uh, for the LRU algorithm. Okay, LRU algorithm is like a queue. So at the top of the queue, you have the least recently used uh, block, and at the bottom you have the most recently used block. And whenever you need to make a replacement, of course, you take out the least recently used one. And again, uh, as we said before, there are exceptions. OK, I note, OK, or uh, the block essential. These are the two things, OK? So LRU is an LRU, but it's a modified LRU. It's a modified LRU. OK, I think the, yesterday we were here last time. Let's continue from this uh, position now. Any questions? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, there are no questions. Then, then uh, let's continue with our discussion about the caches. Windows says that caches are okay. Cache is okay. I will use the cache, but whenever I modify a block inside the cache, I will never keep it in my cache. Okay, this is your this is your computer. Okay, uh, let's say this is your memory, and this is your CPU, and small part of this memory is your disk cache, and this is your disk. This is your memory. This is your cache, but this is your block cache. OK, small part of that memory is the block cache and block cache is sway. Windows says that if if a block is modified, these are our blocks. Let's say these are our blocks. If a block is modified, I will immediately write it to the desk. OK. These are called write to caches. If you do this, if you do this, you will never keep a dirty block, modified block in your memory. So if the system crashes, if the system crashes, you will not have any, you will not have any uh, inconsistent file system because you always write whatever is modified on your desk. This is called write to cache. OK, this is called a write through cache. OK, Unix doesn't do this all the time. Unix doesn't do this all the time. Unix says that, OK, I will keep. I will keep uh, modified blocks and unmodified blocks in my cache as long as possible so that uh, I can perform better. OK, I can perform better. So what is the downside of it? The downside is this. If if there is a system crash, which doesn't happen so often with the Unix, but let's say if there is a system crash or worse yet, let's say this is a let's say this is a USB drive. OK, but this is a USB drive. So what do we do with the USBs? I insert my USB into my computer. I write some files to it. Then I just immediately remove it, right? I just take it out. When you remove the USB from your system, if there are modified blocks, if there are modified blocks in your uh, cache, then you are going to lose data, OK? Uh, they, they, for, for that case, if you remove USB disk from a Unix system, without doing a synchronization first, OK? Uh, uh, that will almost result in lost data and corrupted file system. 
instable, unstable file system. Okay, so that's the downside of uh, 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 not having write through caches. Write through caches are bad for the performance, but they are good for the system stability, especially for systems like that are uh, that are modifiable. Uh, that are modifiable. Uh, uh, or, or maybe, maybe I should say that if your system can have components like USBs, okay, uh, the, the 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 peripherals that can be connected and disconnected uh, anytime, then maybe write through cache is a better idea. Okay, the reason why Windows does this is it's because you know the with the Windows. Uh, from the beginning, okay, everything was based on inserting your uh, disk to the floppy disk uh, uh, slot and uh, 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 also USB drives and etc. In Unix, they didn't have this kind of uh, stuff. Once uh, 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 hardware is connected, it's connected for the lifetime of the computer most of the time. Okay, good. Okay, another Improvement with the file system performance could be done with this idea of read ahead. Okay. Again, we are talking about the cache, the cache between the memory and the desk for the secondary storage. The idea is this. If you are reading a sequential file, okay, if the program says that read block number K, read block number k okay the 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 file system thinks that block number k plus one will be read in a few in a few moments okay so it will automatically issue a command a system command to read the block number k plus one although nobody has said that although nobody has said that this is going to happen but it it does it that way anyway OK, this is called read ahead. So you are reading sequential data. You are reading sequential data and it works very well uh, if you are working with the sequential file uh, reads. OK, uh, remember. When you. Um, let's let's remember our disk structure again. This is our desk. And this is our track spindle. OK, block K is here. K plus one is here. K and K plus one and K plus two and K plus three. Right. So this is the case. So if somebody says that read block K. Right after I read it. It is easy to read K plus one, K plus two, and K plus three. Okay. Right after you read K block number K, if you wait a little bit, then you are gonna miss this part because the disk is spinning very, very fast. Okay. If you don't issue that command, read K plus one after K, then you are gonna miss that opportunity and you will have to wait until the whole disk spins one more. So that will that means that 8.33 milliseconds. OK, 8.33. Remember our last example? Mm -hmm. It was uh, 8.33 milliseconds. Uh, so uh, um, that's the idea. Just read it again. Just read it again after block number K. Yusuf has a question. He says that uh, is this the same as special locality? Yeah, it is very similar. It is it is really very similar. But uh, in in our with, with, with the program program uh, uh, data or program localities in my in our, in our main memory, we didn't have these kind of rotational delay problems. We didn't have these kind of uh, uh, seek problems, right? So uh, uh, we have these problems too. It is very advantageous to read block K and K plus one and K plus two together. Okay, 
at the same time, right after each other. It is very advantageous because if you do that, you don't have to spin your disk. You don't have to wait for the rotational latency a few times. We didn't have these kind of problems in the uh, in the in the in the in the memory caches, but the idea is similar. Yes. What if I am not reading a sequential file? Let's say I read uh, block number K, then I will uh, read block number K plus hundred, or block number uh, M. Uh, M has nothing to do with K. In that case, this read ahead will not read ahead will not give me any advantage. Sometimes it might hurt my uh, performance. So how do I prevent this error? How do I prevent this error? Uh, this 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 uh, performance issue. Maybe I should know which files are sequentially read. OK. Uh, and uh, maybe I can uh, use attribute information uh, from the file attribute. So you can do that kind of you can do that kind of uh, stuff. OK, but read ahead is used with the uh, caches uh, a lot and the disk nowadays they come with lots of cache. Lots of cache. Uh, we are talking about gigabytes of cache. Uh, if you try to buy a hard drive. Uh, specs for one terabyte. I'm trying to see what kind of. Yeah, OK, this one, I don't know what it is, but. You don't see my screen. OK, you see it now. OK. So this is a one terabyte disk. It says that it has 64 megabytes of cache on this one. The cache is a kind of small on this disk, but let me see if there are any caches. I only see 64 megs. <laughs> okay, but, but 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 this one is this one is on the disk itself. There is a second cache. OK, this one is on the disk. This is not in my mind mem me memory. OK, so the disk is doing its own cache management. Whenever I ask a disk to read a file for me, the disk might be might be using this cache to provide the data. The 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 black cache we are talking about is in my my memory. OK, so we will talk about this cache when we talk about the IO. Yeah, yeah, I see that's what I am talking about. Nowadays we are using very large cache for the desks. Uh, I don't know the exact amount. It is system configurable and it is not user dependent, of course. Operating system makes a decision on it. Okay. Obviously you cannot, obviously you cannot uh, reserve half of your memory for this block cache. OK. This has to be something reasonable. Oh, you mean that how much of your OK, I, I didn't understand your question. Um, uh, I don't I, I, I mean. Uh, I don't think that there is a single as like 30 percent, 40 percent, 20 percent. OK, it depends on the opportunity. If the, all the files are, if the, all the files are uh, random, random makes sense, then you don't do any read ahead to zero percent. But if you are doing lots of sequential files, maybe it is better to have, maybe it is better to have uh, uh, almost all of your cache for the read ads. Okay. 
Nowadays, nowadays these three the hats are so good that most of your disk fees come from the cash because of the read the hats. So most of the stuff that you read from your desk, secondary storage, comes from the cash. Because of the right to do, you only, you only end up writing to your desk. You don't read it much, but you write a lot, okay? That's why remember our uh, log file systems. Log file systems said that read ahead performance of our current file systems are so good, okay? Reading is fine, but writing is a problematic. So what do we do? They said that we keep our data to be to be written to the desk. When the buffer is full, we write it at the same time. Okay, we write it at the same time. So you make lots of changes to your file system when you write this, this segment, changing uh, of the uh, I nodes and etc. But uh, that log file system worked that way. The idea of log file system comes from the read ahead is so good, but writing is problematic. So maybe we should write it at the same time. So log file system is kind of trying to do the same thing for the writing. Of course, there is no write ahead, right? You realize that right? you cannot do write ahead. What are you going to write? For the read ahead, you kind of make a guess. If you read this one, then you are going to read the whole track. Write ahead, what, what are you going to do? I mean, you need the data to write. So there is no write ahead, but the log file system says that I will keep the data to be written to the disk in a buffer, and as soon as that buffer is full, I will write the whole data to a, to, to, to a, to a segment in my disk. You might say that, but your block numbers are very different in that uh, segment. Uh, that log file system says that that's okay, I will make the necessary changes. Okay, so read log file systems again uh, to understand this read ahead, better, uh, read ahead better. Okay, another improvement, performance improvement might come from the disk arm motion. Remember our disk structure? Remember our disk structure? Uh, let me find that picture that I showed you earlier. Okay, it is here. Okay. So if you, if you're, this is, this is a disk platter, there are two things. One is you need to move your head in and out in this direction and you need to spin your desk in one direction. Two latencies, rotational latency and C time. Two, two, two latencies. So if your, if your track is under your head, then you, you are lucky. You don't have to move your head because the C time takes lots of time. Okay. So the idea is, why don't we, why don't we, and the the further the, the further this destination, further the distance, more time you're gonna spend. So the idea is, let's let's keep our okay. The idea is, let's keep our. Uh, uh, most important frequently accessed blocks uh, at convenient locations. Okay. Uh, put blocks that are likely to be accessed in the sequence close to each other, probably in the same cylinder. Okay. So that's why uh, putting the blocks of the same file in the same track, in the same cylinder, uh, is important. By the way, what is the difference between a track and a cylinder? What is the difference between a track and a cylinder? OK. 
Can anybody tell? Track is a singular thing. Uh, is more general, like sets. Yes, that's that's true. Track is this. If I look at the whole disk, okay, whole hard drive. Track is track is the single circle, like this one. This is a track. But cylinder is the combination of all tracks on all of our uh, pilotus. So cylinder is something like this. OK, so if you keep your data on the same cylinder, your data could be on different pilotus. OK, your data could be on this pilotus, this pilotus and this pilotus. Doesn't matter if you use the same track on all of your platters for your file, then that means that you don't have to move your read write head. OK, so whenever I say keep your data on the same cylinder, OK, they are on the same track number on different platters, but they are on the same cylinder. You don't need to move your access head. That's the difference between cylinder and uh, um, that's the difference between cylinder and the uh, track okay so use this idea for the i nodes put the i nodes in the middle of the disk thus reducing the average seek time uh, between the i node and the first block by a factor of two okay so that's the idea uh, uh, you could you, you you could implement this because right after you read your i node you're gonna start reading the blocks of your file right so maybe i should keep my i nodes and the blocks uh, very close to each other so what am i gonna do if this is my desk if this is my desk okay put the i nodes in the middle track so as soon as i read a i node block here where am i gonna go maybe i will go this way or that way after that right so since i am in the middle track middle cylinder uh, my distance will be uh, shorter than going all the distance from the inner track to the outer track okay that's that's one uh, improvement that's one improved. Of course, this is only valid for the uh, mechanical hard drives. Nowadays, we started using these solid state drives, which are not mechanical, okay? Which are not mechanical. They don't have any seek times. They don't have any rotational delays. So the picture is very different when it comes to SSDs, okay? But SSDs have their own problems. What are the main problems for the SSDs? Due to their construction, due to their physical properties, okay? Deleting is very, very slow compared to reading. Of course, reading and writing is much faster than compared to, much faster than hard drives, okay? Phys mechanical hard drives. But deleting is for some reason is slow, then I need to make optimizations accordingly. OK, and if you keep reading and writing the same area of the SSD, you will wear it out. That part will become a bad block. OK, so uh, operating system or the SSD itself has to take care of the situation and it should take uh, uh, it should place uh, it should replace the position of a uh, 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 it should replace the position of a block from time to time. For example, the I node. 
the 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 uh, uh, I nodes are written very uh, frequently when the file is opened. Okay, if you keep opening uh, uh, the same block over and over again, you will you will you will wear that block out, or some popular directories or some uh, swap area, right? Swap area. So uh, these are the problems for the SSD that. I'm not going to talk about the SSD right now. I'm talking about the disk arm motion. So uh, put the inodes in the middle disk, middle of the disk, that's one idea. The other idea is this. The other idea is this. Let's have groups of cylinders. Okay. Best idea. So I have a cylinder group here. These, these are my first cylinder group. And the red one is my second cylinder group. OK. And inside each cylinder group, I divide my disk into uh, uh, places like the inode uh, cylinders, OK, inode tracks and the data block tracks. So I know that whenever I read the inode, let's say these are the inodes. OK, these are inodes. I know that if I read an inode from this part, I know that the, the corresponding blocks for this I know is inside the same cylinder block, cylinder group, group. Okay, for this one it is here, for this one it is there. So if you do this organization, then your C times will be much uh, shorter. That's the, that's the idea. Of course, as you see, these are all improvements depending on your uh, uh, file system type. I am talking about the inode, inode based Unix uh, uh, file systems, and these are the improvements. For the NTFS or the FAT file systems, the improvements might be different. So these are very, very uh, file system and mechanical drive dependent optimizations. But nevertheless, uh, we have to do this kind of optimization. Otherwise, if you don't do this kind of optimizations, your file system performance will be very bad compared to alternative file systems. OK, good. And as I said before, this uh, reducing this kind of motion of PC doesn't work for the SSDs. It, it is valid only for the uh, mechanical hard drives. OK, so. If you continue, let's look at the uh, let's look at the structure of two or three file systems more closely. Let's look at the fat based file systems. Yusuf has a question: Why there is a memory trade-off for cylinder group? I don't understand what you mean by that question, Yusuf. Did I say anything like that? Trade-off for cylinder group? Can you explain it? This is a structure purely done on your uh, hard drive. Uh, this has nothing to do with your memory. Of course, this makes your file system more complicated because you need to find the balance between the inodes mm -hmm. and the blocks. And it, and it, it looks like you have many, many disks and keeping your very large files mm -hmm. might be problematic, but. I, OK, you make a search and oh, OK. While you are listening to me and you are reading it from the net, that's a good idea. You just search and it says that it takes 10% of the space. Oh, that's, that's not your memory, right? That's that's the hard disk space. It's not your physical memory. That's the hard disk space, right? 
So remember, mm-hmm. remember last time. Okay. Uh, remember last time we, when we talk about the I notes, we said that what would be the most inefficient way of uh, using your I notes, and somebody said that uh, if we have many many small files, that would be very inefficient for the I notes because for each small file, file size of one, you need to keep an I know that I know is a whole block, right? That's what I said. Uh, so usually you don't have you wouldn't have so many small files uh, without having a large file in your file system okay there are some small files there are some large files they they kind of they kind of cancel the effect is canceling each each other's uh, 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 effect out so that's what you end up with if you if you divide your disk into different cylinder groups, okay, you may have to put extra I nodes, extra blocks, so that in case one cylinder group has so many small uh, files, then you will need more I nodes in that case. So you need to keep extra I nodes uh, uh, for each of these cylinder groups, okay. So definitely this one, usually, okay, most of the time, if you try to make something fast, you are trading off your space most of the time, okay? Uh, uh, like like with the hashing, uh, uh, like with the cash management. If you keep, if you keep some of your pages empty, page replacement all the time, it would be very fast to implement uh, a page replacement operation. Okay, just you just replace one of the empty pages. But keeping empty pages means that you are not using that memory location. So you are trading. Uh, you are trading the speed with the uh, uh, unused memory position. And this is kind of the same. If you divide your cylinder group. If you do, if you find your cylinders into four or five uh, different sections, then you need to put the extra information on your uh, uh, desk, and you need to make sure that you have enough number of I nodes for the whole, for the whole, uh, for each of the cylinder groups. Okay, so that must be it. Okay. Uh, when we come to when we come to the I/O section, I/O chapter. Sorry, when we come to I/O chapter, we will talk about this uh, this structure a lot. We will talk about it uh, a lot, and in that case, we will see that even for some cases, leaving empty gaps between the data uh, has advantages in terms of speed, and we will talk about those. I mean. I know, although they are very, very attractive, I know, although they are very, very attractive, is kind of trading of speed with this space, right? We said that you cannot have perfect number of I nodes, okay? And I don't want to be uh, uh, limited in terms of I nodes, so I keep more I nodes, more than necessary most of the time for my system, okay? So uh, I know the idea of I know is kind of the same. You trade off the, uh, this performance with uh, this usage. OK, let's look at the uh, very basic uh, and popularly used file system, ms file system. And oh, of course, the file system, they start with the directories, right? They start with the uh, directories. Let's say this is our Disk block number zero to block number, very big number like that one. At the beginning, we have our root directory, and inside the root directory, okay, we have files, okay. And this is the structure of the entry for each file for the MS DOS file system. So it's going to be maybe. 
fat 16, fat 32, or sometimes fat 12. That means that fat 16 means that you use 16 bits to address a block number. So there could be total of 2 to the power 16 blocks. Okay, 2 to the power 16 blocks. And if each block is uh, 2 to the power, let's say uh, 14, like uh, 16 kilobytes, okay, that means that our total disk size will be 2 to the power 30, 1 gigabyte, okay. So this uh, the number of bits that you represent uh, that you that you use to address each block is is this way. So this is the this is the directory structure. Inside the directory for each file, I have of course the eight character file name, three characters extension. You cannot have larger file names, longer file names. You cannot have. Uh, uh, only ASCII file names. There is no way to use, okay, it has to be ASCII file names, and it has to be uh, eight characters long at most, okay? An extension is, it has to be three. So the MSOS file system, FAT file system, is of course, uh, is a, uh, uh, extension sensitive, file system. Then after that, I have the attributes one byte. What kind of attributes do I have? Is it a hidden file? Is it a system file and etc. OK, so I have 10 bytes reserved. Microsoft did not tell us what those 10 bytes are. Of course, we know what they are, but Microsoft says that don't use these 10 bytes because in my next Windows or uh, MS DOS release, I might change the meaning of those 10 bytes. So those are reserved. Usually uh, system designers, they do this kind of stuff. They say that I, as a regular user, you should not deal with these bytes. These are for my internal use only. And then I have two bytes for the time two bytes for the date, and uh, here is the first block number, your block number, okay? First block number. So first block number, this is FED 32, just a minute. Uh, first block number gives me the the, the the block where uh, I can find the first block. Then after that, I go to the FAT table and I follow the linked list, right? So uh, how, how did the FAT table work? It has a linked list structure for the whole disk. That's why I need to load the whole linked list of the disk in my memory, and that would take lots of memory space. And I didn't uh, like it much because that's too much. That's why uh, Unix people, they uh, invented inodes. They don't keep the link list for the whole disk. And I have the size of the file in four bytes. OK, uh, in terms of byte. This is a block number. This is uh, size in terms of blocks. OK, this is the basic structure for the ms -DOS file system. Of course, this file, okay, this file name here could be another directory name. So if it's in another directory, I would know that it's a directory by looking at these attributes. Attributes has a small, uh, a small bit that says if that's a regular file or a directory. If it's a directory, then I go to the, the block of that directory and I will see another another uh, directory structure there. OK. Any questions with the MS-DOS file system? 
And these are the possible addressable partition sizes. Possible addressable partition sizes. Uh, ms -DOS makes it possible to have for a given partition. Remember uh, our main this structure at the beginning, I have the master boot record. Then I have the partition information, right? Then I have the active partition, okay? So on my on my desk, let's say this is my desk. Let's say I have one, two, three, four disk partitions. In my partitions, this one could be a fat 16 partition. This could be an NTFS partition. This could be an EXT partition, Unix partition, and this could be FAT32. So each partition has their own parameters. Uh, for the file access table uh, system, each partition may have its own block size. If my block size is, if my block size is, uh, Two to the power nine. Okay, this is two to the power nine. This is ten. Okay, eleven. What was that way? Okay, so this, these are the uh, 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 block sizes in terms of uh, two to the power. Uh, so if my block size is a FAT12 is 2 to the power 9, and this is this is this is uh, 12, right? So I can have at most for this one, I can have at most 2 to the power 12 blocks, and each block is 2 to the power 9. That means that I have 2 to the power 21 bytes at most. That makes two megabytes. Okay, so two megabytes is the largest partition. Okay, largest disk partition. It is not the size of the file; it is the size of the whole partition. If you choose it that way. So if you are using FAT thirty-two, and if your block sizes are thirty-two, okay. So in that case, you are going to have at most two terabytes of partition size. OK, usually they don't prefer FAT32, but FAT16. OK, FAT16 might be the most. FAT16 might be the uh, most common file system available today because many Digital equipment, small equipment like the digital cameras or early cell phones, etc. They use this file system because it is publicly available. Nobody is going to charge you to use it, and uh, uh, all the it is it is it, 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 it has a very good compatibility. If you let's say if you have a small uh, 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 micro disk on your device. If you use the FAT16, that that small microchip, micro micro drive, will be used by any other device that uses the FAT16. Okay, so FAT16 is kind of a trade-off between this and this, FAT12 and FAT32. For the FAT32, the the table file access table becomes so big, I cannot fit it in, in my memory. But FAT16, it is manageable. OK, it is manageable. So this is the ms -DOS file system. It is not that complicated. But of course, uh, uh, as usual, if you have something practical, if you are trying to optimize things, then things might be complicated. One of the oldest file systems, uh, it is older than the, if it, it is older than the ms -DOS actually. It came uh, before MS OS. OK, good. Oh, OK, I'm out of time. Uh, let's have. Let's have 10 minutes of break. 
uh, 11.24 now. Mm -hmm. Let's meet at 11.34. And when we come back, I will start answering uh, Selma's question. Why can't fat turkey have smaller block size? OK, we'll talk about it.
Okay. Uh, so, Saman is a question. It's a good question. Why can't Fat32 have smaller block size? Okay, he's not, he's not asking me why uh, uh, Fat12 doesn't have 8 kilobyte block sizes. Actually, it is almost the same question. Uh, uh, I mean, during Fat12 days, uh, of course, I mean, Fat12 and 16 was before Fat32. We didn't have that big disks, okay? So with FAT16, a two gigabyte disk was the maximum that you can have. And maybe it was almost impossible. The, for the FAT32, it is very difficult to have a hard disk that is smaller than one terabyte, okay? So it doesn't make much sense to support two gigabyte blocks. Okay, if you do it with the two kilobytes, uh, your maximum uh, this size will be half a terabyte, and we don't have a half a terabyte this anymore. You cannot find it. And if somebody needs it, if, if somebody has that kind of a disk, then use FAT16. Okay, remember, you don't want to keep your block sizes small. Okay, if you keep your block sizes small, what was the trade-off for the block size? If the block size is too large, then in that case, uh, uh, you are going to waste lots of space uh, for the internal fragmentation. If the block size is too small, okay, your indexing, your fats, uh, your, your number of uh, blocks for each file will be large and you will be doing lots of uh, uh, moving around in your index table. And also remember, for the block, uh, small block sizes, uh, your throughput, this throughput was uh, slow. That's why you need to find that balance. And if you are keeping 32 bits to point to your blocks, then your blocks should not be half a kilobyte. It should be at least four kilobytes. Okay. And it looks like actually, it looks like you have four options. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, for this one, one, two, three, four, five. And it looks like in the partition table for the FAT, maybe you have only two or three, three bits to represent uh, what to represent the size of the blocks. Let's say I am using two bits. Zero, zero means that one ter terabyte. Zero, one means that it is two uh, terabytes. One, zero, and one, one. I have only four options, and uh, uh, they use these four options for to to to. Uh, they use these four options for for this kind of block size. Okay, so I can only make guesses, but uh, this must be it. Okay, that's a good question. So this is the uh, DOS world. Let's come to the Unix world. Okay. Uh, the Unix v7 file system, the directory structure, okay, this was our directory for the MSOs, FAT system, okay. Uh, it looks like the first block number is two bytes, so this is FAT16, right? FAT16 structure. For uh, FAT32, I need to have four bytes in here, okay. So. So that, that, that would be the only difference between the directory entries from FAT systems. When we come to Unix file system, this is the directory entry. Okay. And this is so simple. I don't have any, I don't have any date information, attribute information. Um, uh, the, what else? read write protection information in there so why is it so simple compared to what we have with the msos question why the directory entry for a unix file system is so simple you have your file name only okay and you have your inode number that's it question why is it so simple
Maybe the metadata is embedded in the file data. Well, yeah, that's kind of true, but you you should you should you should rephrase it better. Tell me in a better way. Yeah, what you are saying is true, but we have many i i nodes, right? And each file is assigned at least one i node. And this is the block number. And let's say this is my i node. What do I have inside my i node? Okay. Somebody is. We have a table. What? We have a table for them. No, we don't have a table. All we have is i nodes. Okay. It's the file name. This is my root directory. In my root directory. Okay, I have the directory user. I have the directory etc. I have the directory dev tmp. And for each one, I have the inode 12, 15, 207, 11, etc. Okay, and I go to that inode number. That inode number contains the blocks for that file, right? contains the blocks for that file. But before that, what do I have? Let's say this is 16. This is I know 16. I have the attributes here. Attributes. So I keep all of my file attributes inside my inode and I have my block numbers. Like that. OK, so Selman, we have we don't have a table. Well, I mean, if you consider this as a table, yes. But uh, that information is uh, that information is uh, contained inside the attribute area of the I node. Okay, that's why this structure is so simple. It is so simple. By the way, when you make an ls, okay, when you say ls minus l, what does it give you? Okay, if you if you do this. No, not that one. I open this. Okay, when I say ls minus l. In this directory, it gives me the file name. Also, it gives me all the other information like the size of the file. The date it has it was modified and the read, write, permissions, and etc. I have all, all of that information. So that means when I say ls, ls reads this one, okay, ls reads this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, then it reads all of these inodes, and inside the inode, it finds all of those information and prints them, right? So ls is kind of expensive for Unix. For MS does, since this is a structure, if you go to a directory, all uh, with the uh, MS does, what do I do? CMD? Yeah. When I say there, okay, directory, it just reads the directory and all the information that is listed is available on that directory. It doesn't have to follow any links. So taking a their directory in MS DOS is faster than taking an LS in Unix in this case. Okay. So uh, this is so simple because Unix keeps all the attributes in the inodes. Okay. So I call it a table because we access it by inode number, but it is more like a list. OK, I mean, if you call this attributes part as a table, yes, but that means that you don't have a table where you have all the information about all the files. You have a table of attributes for each file, and that table is contained inside the inode of that file. Okay, so that I know it contains it. 
Good. So uh, let's look at more detail of this one. Usually, as I said, each file is pointing to an inode. At the top, I have the I, uh, attributes, then I have the block numbers. OK, the Unix v7 file system, Unix v7 file system, has a special uh, property. It says that, OK, this is a block, right? It is a block. And this block, let's say, is a four kilobytes. Doesn't matter what it is. I have some space for the attributes. Then I start listing the, the block numbers of the file. These are the block numbers of the file. But the last three pointers are special pointers. This one says that the, 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 the third one from the last says that I am going to point a, a special block. OK, that block contains pointers to other blocks. Single indirect block. OK, the the the, the one that is the, uh, the second from the last, it says that I am pointing to a special block which contains which contains pointers to other pointer blocks. Double indirect blocks. So these are these are the red ones are the file blocks. These are the five blocks, OK? And the last one says that it is a triple indirect block. A block that po po points to another block, that points to another block, and finally, these are the five blocks, OK? This is how they, this is how they are dealing with the uh, uh, large file problems. If the file is small, then you don't need any single indirect blocks, OK? If the file is small, all you need is this inode. If the file is a little bit larger, then you need to use this. A, a little bit more larger, but if it's the largest, then you need to use all of that information. Unix V5. Let's look at this idea again. This is a directory structure. OK, let's get to directories and the inodes and the blocks and etc. The book has a very good example. OK. At the beginning of my partition, OK, at the beginning of my partition, I have my uh, root directory. OK. And inside my root directory, it says that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight files. And two of them are special files. But this is this is the current directory, this is the parent directory. Uh, the parent directory of the root directory is the root directory again. So the current directory, the I know, okay, or the current directory. And the parent of the current directory is one. Okay. Uh, I have these directories again, these files again. And let's look at the user. Okay, user says that the user file is located at inode 6. Okay. The user file is located at inode 6. When I look at the inode 6, OK, when I look at the inode 6, I get the attributes of inode 6. Say that uh, this is the mode of the file, read, write, and see if it is size these are the times. And probably it will say that uh, this is a directory. OK, this is a directory. And uh, the block for the directory it looks like for I know but what I know number I know number six. So I know number six and well I forgot this one. 
Designer of our website and the uh, two is the black number of the of this file. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my voice is sometimes we can hear you. I am not getting any messages. Is it only or how about the internet? Somebody has told me a few minutes ago. Me. I don't know, should I switch back to, should I switch back to my computers? Mm -hmm. Is it, is it, I don't know. It might be my computers, my person, and then it will be synchronization. That I will use.
for a while my OBS did not record your questions and for a while my OBS did not record my voice because I switched because I switched from cell phone microphone to computer microphone in that case I should have done this that way anyway okay how about this now it works okay so I fixed it I hope this production stuff is so difficult almost every time you make a mistake if you make a small change it changes the other thing and now I am running uh, two or three things at the same time OBS and the teams and the second team and anyway okay so uh, this is the whole idea of uh, CD-ROMs and uh, I, I guess that's it I don't have an inode okay all you do is you get your location of the file from the directory and go to that position and read your file there is no inode there is no fat tables okay there is no link everything is contiguous everything is contiguous uh, so as you see this looks like very much like Microsoft stuff right I mean you have your data file and the flags and etc it looks very much like an MS DOS stuff so naturally Unix people didn't like it Unix people didn't like it they said that we are going to use this extended attribute position to keep to keep Unix like uh, uh, attributes like in Unix what do we have we have the read write permissions right read write x we are going to use that kind of information so they proposed their extensions they it, it's called rock ridge extensions okay so they use the system field of uh, ISO 6990 to make the CD-ROMs Unix compatible so they they added these nine new fields px pn sl nm etc okay in the px field uh, remember they are using this field now to keep all that information px uh, and m sl etc those six fields okay the px contains the POSIX attributes like the permissions read write permissions execute permissions etc okay and uh, now Yusuf has a question he says that why is there a depth limit for directories did I mention that did I mention there is a depth limit for the directories there are six directories depth limit okay that's that's what they did really okay yeah and actually the book has explanation for why because because they said that if I keep if I load all the directories in my memory at the same time if I keep, uh, load all the directories in the same time accessing would be very very fast but if I have infinite number of directory hierarchies then that would be difficult to keep that in my memory so that's an optimization issue that's an optimization issue and remember uh, at the beginning okay remember at the beginning uh, the CDs are developed for storing sound so you didn't have that made that that kind of complicated file system in 1982 right so uh, six is the, I think that limit but Unix people didn't like it okay Unix people didn't like it six is too limiting that's why they had they added this minor and major um, device numbers plus the child location and parent location so they are developing their own uh, so they are de making their own directory structure out of these CDs so if you are using rock ridge extensions you don't have that limitation so instead of so you are saying that it is a so six is a wrong number eight eight is correct so whatever it is 
So Ahmet Yasir has another question. Uh, but why try making CD similar to Unix file systems? In essence, CDs are single, right? Multiple read data containers for so populating the file entries with more data does not seem feasible. What is the advantage of Unix extensions? Well, I mean, how do you how do you use a CD-ROM under Unix? You mount it, right? You have your root directory. Under your root directory, you have your user directory, TMP directory, and MNT directory. Under MNT, you mount your hard drive, your USB, and your CD-ROM. Okay. If you switch from root directory to the MNT, then CD-ROM, when you make a list, what you would expect? I would expect to see a regular Unix directory with the read write extension, read write execute permission, and etc. Okay. So I can treat I can treat these kind of files as a regular Unix files. Otherwise, my Unix open command system call would not work on these files from the CD-ROM. Okay. POSIX system calls need those kind of information from your files. Otherwise, that they, they they will not work. So they they that that way they made these CD-ROMs compatible with the Unix file system. So you might say that uh, this information is not useful. You know, it, they may not be useful, especially the read, write, execute permissions and etc. But uh, to be able to make it work with the regular POSIX system calls, I need to have these extensions. It makes things a lot easier. Okay, so so these kind of extensions makes it possible. For example, the symbolic link is possible now. When you say this file is a symbolic link file on the CD, now it is possible. Before that, it wasn't possible. Alternative name. Remember in Unix file system, the names could be any length. It could be any length, okay? Uh, but with this one, with this one, the name, file name could be at most 15 characters. And usually it is sent as key characters. With the Unix, alternate name field provides you this uh, information. Okay. So these are the, again, for the Unix uh, world, CD-ROM extensions. After that, Microsoft World, they said that although we have designed this, although we have designed this original CD-ROM structure, we don't like it anymore. We are going to have our own extensions, which is called Juliet extensions. Okay. And this is Microsoft's edition extensions to the CD-ROM ISO 9660. Okay. Uh, Microsoft said that now we have long file names, so I am going to uh, put the uh, uh, long line line file names in there. Unicode, Unicode character set, uh, characters in Turkish characters like the, uh, 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 these these characters like the uh, uh, soft G, yumuşak G, uh, uh, and U, and kind of these characters, okay? And directory nesting deeper than eight levels and directory names with extensions. These are the things that are uh, extended using this Juliet. Microsoft did this. Okay, so this is a pretty good extensible stuff. Uh, the technology comes from 1980s. Okay, and we still keep using it. Okay, of course, after that, we have writable CDs. Their file system is different. Their file system is different. Remember, uh, uh, from the beginning, when we talked about the file systems, contiguous file location is a desired thing for this file system because there is no file modification. When you start modifying your files, of course, contiguous allocation becomes a problem. Okay, good. Oh, okay, I'm out of time. Are there any questions? 
I'm going so slow, I don't know why. Okay, if there are no questions, then that's it for today. I will stop recording. Mustafa, you didn't have any problems with regarding my voice? 